I saw like one of the projects you worked on GitHub, like Sweaterify, yep. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of amazed me that looking at code from a sort of artistry point of view, like code as an art form or as a medium, um, and what do you think about that? Yeah, so like the Sweaterify was basically browser-based uh, way to experiment and test a knitting pattern and then like kind of visualize it in front of you before you actually spend time on knitting stuff. Um, the, the way I came across was that when I was making knitting pattern, uh, knitting come in two forms. It's like a graph paper, pretty much visualize, you know, the, the, the blueprint of what it looked like, or it comes in like form of um, written instruction. So it's, you know, cast on this much um, stitches and then knit this pattern. It's like in like a written language. And then what I noticed was that it is really close to code. It was very much knitting code. So I was like, oh, I can just put that into, you know, my JavaScript. I was a JavaScript developer back then, so, you know, I can do it in JavaScript. And that's how that it kind of got started. But then I realized that um, I can quickly iterate my creative process because it is in code and it's like all the valuables are all in, you know, in the place. I can tweak the valuables. I can see what it's like in, you know, hundred different versions and I find it really interesting. Then I discovered like a, a creative coding community that does like a generative art. So it's the art is the output, but then they write code and they kind of like experiment with different algorithms and tweak the variables and then like see what happens. It's like really different um, approach from software engineering. Yeah. Like, so in software engineering, I worked as a software engineer, it's just like, you don't really want unexpected results. <laughs> <laughs> there is a target that you need to hit, it's all defined, and then you write a code for it. But then when you think about the coding as a creative process, you um, kind of start to introduce like a fun to like, oh, what if I change that to negative one? Like, and the fear of the unknown, right? You're embracing that. I know I want to create something interesting, but I have no idea what that is. And then you just let the, the sort of the, yeah. the pieces fall where they may. Yep. I mean, how do you go about um, sketching that stuff? Because I mean, from when a designer is like, I mean, I can't design in browser. I just, I don't understand how anyone can. Not necessarily literally sketching, could be anything like writing code comments or whatever. But I mean, how do you, because that's the bit which if I find so difficult to understand is, I look at the code and it looks like looking at the matrix. <laughs> I don't understand how you get from, it's almost like, you know, write code, question mark, profit. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, how do you actually get to, what's the process of actually yeah, yeah, designing yeah. the thing? Designing the thing. So um, I feel like there was like iteration, like, you know, they iterate anything with anything. There was like iteration of stuff. But I start with paper actually. So I have an idea. Um, if it was I was creating like some kind of art, a visual or something, I would go for like, I want to have this circle on this page or like, you know, kind of like a visual set. I like, I pretty much like comes from like a visual mindset. So I can't start from logic. I just start from like, here is the thing I want to see on the screen. Granted, it will not end up like that at all at the end. But then I get to code after I have like some basic ideas of how my visual wants to look like. And then, there is like another design iteration of negotiation between whatever technology that I'm using, usually browsers and you know JavaScript and Web API, that like I thought I wanted to make this interaction on paper, but it doesn't really work on browser because I changed the medium yeah. and that's my medium. And negotiation between technology and my creativity of like can I how can I achieve what I wanted to do in my head on this medium that is usually built browser for me. And Sometimes it's impossible, or sometimes it's not reasonable to do the interaction that I thought I want to make um, on my head or paper. And I'm like, all right. And then sometimes I discover like a new API or like a new thing in browser and being able to like, oh, actually I can change that. This is quite interesting. I can change my original design to do something different. So it's usually ended up like a completely different thing from what I originally sketched. But I quite enjoy the discussion and negotiation between technology and me. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a game of like, I have this plan, can I do this in browser? And will browser let me do this? If not, can I find a loophole? Is there like, you know, kind of clearing up the level? <laughs> and playing a game basically with the technology yeah, and trying yeah. to discover what is possible and what isn't. But can, I mean, also you can often, 
take lessons learned from that art yeah. into your everyday. I mean, it may not be like you're doing some generative pattern, but there's like a technique or coding thing that you can bring back in, which is like, you know, invaluable, right? Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. I learned so many things that I like, code snippets that I like ended up using in my production code for yeah. my job. You know, it's so do you recommend knitting as a way to learn <laughs> how to do I do. <laughs> it's quite algorithmic, quite algorithmic um, process. Um, it's, I, I recommend anybody to do it. It's quite binary knitting. I'm going into super geeky stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but in knitting, there's uh, two versions of stitches, which is like yarn, pulling the yarn from the back or pushing the yarn from front. And that creates like a different face of a knitwear. And the combination of that creates complicated patterns. So it's bi basically binary. And one, how one. you arrange that binary and how you repeat that binary pattern becomes the, um, the final product. So it's, it's, when you're designing the knitting pattern, it's quite like uh, exercise of defining the algorithm to get to this pattern. For a designer to get to learn how to sort of um, see code as like paint or whatever, mm -hmm. or to see a developer sort of just uh, embracing the unpredictable, I mean, what advice would you give to them? Uh, so I think every time I like do creative projects, um, the question I get or the feedback I get is like, so what? Or <laughs> what does it do? Uh, how is it useful, right? And like getting over that, those like a uh, uh, mentality of like, if you do code, you have to make uh, useful tools that everybody's going to use and get so many GitHub stars and you get VC funding and start a startup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm like, you don't need to aim for that. You can just use coding as a creative expression to, you know, flex the creative muscles. And once you like thinking about like what I'm making, it doesn't have to make money. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to help somebody else. Um, this is purely for my fun and discovery, then um, it gets a lot easier to experiment. It gets a lot easier to, um, I don't know, get into code and just like, you know, make 100 different versions that is not tracked on GitHub. <laughs> that's totally fine. <laughs> Providing a performing experience is something that requires, you know, close collaboration between two sides. Like, I don't think I'd ever seen skeleton screens as a concept until I started reading like blogs that designers were working on. Yeah.